Now, recently, uh, we reached uh, information uh, reached us that uh, there was an announcement of the Ukrainian governmental site, official site, that they are making this a pause, so to say, in the integration process, and they need some reflection due to their security interests, and they would like to Russia to be involved in the dialogue, or trialogue, I don't know how it could be called. Very difficult to co comment immediately, just uh, very difficult to say something more. We always said that it's in the hands of Ukrainians how they will behave, in the, in the hands of the leadership, in particular President Yanukovych, what kind of decisions they will take. No, no one will take decisions for them. So the beauty of this uh, Eastern Partnership project is that nobody, nobody implying or enforcing any decision or, or so to say, imposing any project forcefully uh, because it explains by itself we have very different member, members of the program. As we mentioned not once that Belarus member of Customs Union and it's not a drama. We're trying to find the way how we can talk to them. Armenians made a, a similar statement. Well, Georgia, Moldova, uh, well on track to initial uh, association agreements. I hope no obstacles for that. Moving ahead with the visa uh, discussions, negotiations. It's a special, special, so to say, also case for uh, Azerbaijan. Uh, they have no ambitions to get into European Union, no, no need to adjust their legal basis, but they can play a decisive, uh, important role in the region, especially with regard to energy policy. So very different ambitions, very different expectations, and, and that uh, explains that uh, we're really open to uh, everyone, and we're really ready to meet expectations and to reach out to them and to do as much as they uh, ready to accept or, or ready to deliver. So this is really just yet another example of that. But uh, I, I told that we did not have uh, clarity from Ukraine, and still I, I, I'm not in the position to make some any final comments. Uh, I believe let's wait because political life is intensive and really dynamic, and many changes every day. Even not once per day, we received very good news from Ukraine today about uh, passing the law on elections. One of the tasks and one of the deliverables we, we, we expected. I know that in, in the cooking and other laws like judicial and prosecution. If it's not today, maybe tomorrow also we'll be meeting with Rada, as far as I know, it's also to the direction what we do expect. Uh, we know that there is a very hard discussion and working group is busy and ready to work, as far as I know, per night to cook this uh, draft uh, law on the medical treatment, uh, which uh, has to do with the uh, selected justice case. And uh, very difficult, so to say, to, to, to make any conclusions. What, what for all this stuff going on, if, if the decision to, to, to derive or whatever. So let's, let's wait a bit more clarity, and then we'll see. But we need this clarity, and whatever signals will come, we'll take them realistically, with all respect, and uh, just, just life is continuing. Just, I, I believe, no, nothing could be bad for this. Uh, but again, again, I, I will repeat that uh, a lot of things uh, depend on the leadership in Ukraine and personally on President Yanukovych because many things leverage is in his hands and he should take initiative on many issues to take just decision, not, not just technical decision, but also strategic de decision. And uh, let's, let's respect this uh, as, as a reality and simply this is the situation where we are. But uh, talking generally, you, you said what we do expect. So we really do expect different deliverables. We also do expect a uh, vision of, of Eastern Partnership beyond 2013 uh, because uh, we, need, we need to address this issue on regular. And I know that there's already planned next uh, summit in, in, in Riga in 2015. So we're already looking uh, the distance ahead. Uh, well, this is the situation how it looks like. So we'll play our role, we'll do our part in, in a constructive way, I believe, with full, full respect to the decisions made by partners. And, well, here we are. So if there are some questions or additional comments, I would... Minister, welcome. you were saying that, uh, that not just you, but uh, other panelists also were preferring to the responsibility of President Yanukovych, but is it yeah. just his responsibility? On the EU side, there is no more room of maneuver to be uh, more flexible. No, no, look, uh, you defined benchmarks for them to, to, oh, sorry, you defined benchmarks for our friends Ukrainians to, to, to reach. It was done in, the, in December last year. Uh, we are counting 11 of these benchmarks. It's very clear. So, and uh, frankly speaking, implementation of these benchmarks not so bad, I would like to add. So, 
no one, no one made make any final statements. We should judge all picture, you know. We should consider all picture we, we have have ahead of us, unless uh, anything uh, categorical will come from other side. So, so we really, we, we didn't make final decision during last Foreign Affairs Council. We could do that decision, negative, for instance, decision, because time is running, not much time left. So, but it was not done. So, patience, enough patience from our side, I believe enough of flexibility and we said we will take decision anytime we need it if, if the time comes if we'll have sufficient data and we, we are still ready to do that decision uh, but uh, again let's verify information which is slowing very intensively as we speak and uh, just after after clarifying what that means we can make another steps but but everyone is ready to act and if necessary take decisions we told that immediately after foreign affairs council meeting i can repeat that once again so here, here we are. So you, I, I don't, don't think that you made some, something unclear. Very clear statements, very clear requirements, uh, benchmarks. What else could be done? But then the next question comes. Uh, if there is no signature between Ukraine and the uh, European Union, Professor Blokman just said that uh, the Eastern Partnership uh, will go down to the drain. Uh, does it mean really that without Ukraine, without the association agreement with Ukraine, uh, the whole project, the Eastern Partnership, is collapsed, it, it will come empty? Uh, well, I, I would not uh, be so dramatic, but I can share these views. I also told myself many times, uh, with all respect to all countries and Georgia and others, Ukraine is very important because it's a big country and the potential of Ukraine is huge. And uh, on, on, on the decision of Ukraine depends the process and also Eastern Partnership program at, at all. Of course, it will be more difficult. Yes, let's not deny. And it's uh, many question marks raising and although Again, let's not make final conclusions because we do not know what is behind. We do not know comments, just fresh information, what you'll get immediately after our meeting. So better for me to announce you if it's new for you, if you don't know yet. We'll see. But uh, as far as I know, no one told that they are rejecting this integration at all. They told they would like to make some pause, like to look so for, for some, some time for reflection. But nevertheless, as, as I, again, then I will say uh, what I will repeat. Uh, no one would tell 100% sure that it's not possible later, right? But I told it's uh, probability close to zero. If we'll not do that, that now, it's very difficult to rely in the future. So if we'll not do that now, before Vilnius, it will be very difficult to do that later. That's my position still. But again, no one can be for sure 100%. Just, just I think so. I know that there are questions. Uh, I will give the floor immediately, but uh, don't forget we are not in a press conference now. It's a panel discussion. <laughs> so still, I would like to give the floor, Madam Ambassador. What do you think? Uh, how the Eastern Partnership would look like, let's say, without in a deeper relation with Ukraine? Um, I think it's a little bit too early to speculate about it and to predict. Uh, I also agree that, of course, you, Ukraine is the key country in Eastern Partnership, and it is very important to keep Ukraine on board, not least for Georgia, because it, on the participation of Ukraine also depends EU's interests and strategic interests of the European Union in Eastern Partnership. Whether it will collapse uh, if uh, Ukraine doesn't sign uh, in a week's time, I don't know. It may collapse. It may be transformed into something else. And this is something we have to look into. I don't think that there's been a lot of effort. There's been a lot of resources, a lot of effort, uh, both politically and uh, you know, materially put into this. And, uh, and I have hope that uh, there will be some kind of a transformation. Something will come out of the Eastern Partnership in one form or the other. Given the, fact that the minister, given the fact that the minister has limited time, now I will uh, turn the floor, uh, open the floor to you. We shall collect three questions, and then I will ask the, pa the panel members to answer. Uh, in the first row, the three gentlemen were the first ones. Okay. Uh, in in the use your second. Again, uh, because of uh, your active, uh, Mr. Mr. Minister, uh, you mentioned this uh, trialogue. Uh, <laughs> Well, uh, it's, it's quite an issue because uh, some believe that uh, uh, it was a mistake from, from the beginning uh, to, um, to present uh, the association of a country like Ukraine as a zero-sum game. So either it's Russia who gets it or it's the EU uh, who gets it. Uh, Mr. Putin doesn't want to be a loser. I'm sure that Mr. Barroso doesn't want to be a loser and you don't want to be a loser. So uh, why from the beginning uh, uh, didn't you uh, search for a, 
uh, triangle rather than this uh, zero-sum game format. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Other question? Introduce yourself, please. Okay, uh, from China Radio International. My question goes to uh, Mr. Ambassador. So there is a tug of war between EU and uh, Russia uh, to, to exert influences on Eastern Partnership countries. So how can Georgia to push forward the Eastern Partnership uh, as well, at, at the same time to develop the good rela relationship with Russia? Thank you. And the third question? I just want to repeat partially the question of my colleague. Very How good. acceptable is it for the EU that a third country should be involved in the negotiations of a integration of another country, of Eastern Partnership country? I mean, does the EU have an immediate response to Russia if uh, it wants to be inside in the negotiations? Mm -hmm. So, Minister and Ambassador. If you will start. Uh, about Russia, Georgia, and choices between Russia and the West, um, it's been quite difficult for Georgia uh, to balance relations and its interests with Russia and the West. There is almost like a pattern that with the change of every government, there is, a, there is an attempt to reestablish, to normalize relations with Russia. Uh, towards the end, this tends to uh, sour, and we'll have to see whether this pattern will be broken or not this time. Uh, it's difficult because uh, Georgia um, wants to have good neighborly relations, and I think it is very important because we are, uh, and Russia is a strategic partner of the European Union and the, and the biggest neighbor for Georgia. Um, we want to develop these relations, but not at the expense of basic national security interests and its foreign policy priorities. This is very much depends on whether the question of relations between Georgia, Russia and the West will be framed in this zero-sum uh, framework or not. Uh, it's of course possible to move out of it, but it also depends on responses from Russia uh, on the policy coming from Georgia and, uh, and, and the EU. I think um, the balancing and the finding moving forward with the Eastern Partnership is just not, uh, not a question. It's a, it's a decision and it's a priority. It's one of those foreign prior policy priorities that Georgia cannot uh, give up on. Uh, so it will have to be a compromise that <coughs> includes this. But we'll see. Thank you, Minister. Mm -hmm. Yeah, first immediate uh, reaction to it. Of course, we didn't discuss this issue because it's fresh, but immediately what's coming to my mind, no such a precedent in the past, and I do hope personally not in the future that somebody else, with all respect, will take part in our discussion with any country about accession to any organization. We are not part of the dialogue with uh, Armenia or, let's say, Kyrgyzstan. We met today about their accession to customs union and not seeking this role. This is not logic, and I believe this is this is case of the club and the country which is gay trying to get in, and this is this is clear as as, as it is. So, it's, but but again, we have also a separate track and dialogue with all countries, including Russia, which we value very much as a partner, as economic partner, as a political partner, but nothing to do with the process of accession or integration or association, which is which is logical. So that would be my immediate reaction. And on on zero sum, I already said not once. It's very difficult to play any role or to discuss issues when uh, opposing sides, so to say, applying the zero-sum approach. Uh, I believe we proved that it's not the same approach for, from EU because we have these different countries and members of part Eastern Partnership. Uh, some of them are members of Customs Union. Some are, I will not repeat. And this is not a drama. We're talking to all. So it's not, we're not uh, feeling ourselves losers that they are uh, choosing different geopolitical trend or something. No, but they would like to talk, and that's it. It's not losing sight from all. We would like to invite other, 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 other side also to think the same, uh, which is not. We're doing nothing at the expense of that. And if somebody perceives that this is definitely uh, losing uh, process, who, who, who can, who can, so to say, argue? Uh, but but we will be patient enough to explain that this is a free process. The process is uh, if process unnatural, unnatural. If process is forceful. If, if it's something imposed, that's not good. But if it's free, again, it's another story, how it's free. Let's discuss next time. <laughs> but if it's free, if its decision is made, so let's respect this, whatever decision, and that's natural. So this is, this is not a zero-sum game. And, and, and I, I believe we'll come to the point where we'll 
the start to respect position of other countries, be them big or, or small, but if they decided to do something about their future, this is their choice, their decision. By the way, this is enshrined in many documents, starting from OSCE and whatever, and this is not just a slogan, empty words. It's something where we subscribe, all of us, and let's, let's respect that because it's really very important. So, the process <coughs> continues. It's interesting, not boring. Thank you, Minister. Before, before I give the floor for the next round, I do have a question uh, to Professor. The radicalized uh, position of the Russian policy, doesn't it show that the name of the game is not just some commercial and, and uh, superficial political link between the EU and the region, but much deeper and strategical one? Yeah, yes, I think it is. Um, Moscow is certainly perceiving this as, um, as a loss of influence in its, uh, in its satellite states, which it, uh, which it governed before. Uh, it, it might lose uh, an economic link uh, to, the, to the Volga uh, heartland, industrial heartland, the, the, the breadbasket which uh, Ukraine uh, may offer. And it would, in more uh, abstract terms, it will see its power wane on uh, on the international stage, uh, it's already come under pressure in uh, in the Middle East, and uh, if it comes under pressure in its own uh, near abroad, then and then that spells perhaps the end of uh, of a strong armed uh, foreign policy for uh, from the Kremlin, which might have internal reverberations as well. Thank you. Next round. Three question again, please. Christopher Zieler from the Stuttgart side in Germany. Um, uh, after this morning, uh, the no from the Parliament was widely received as a part of a gamble, perhaps an ongoing process. Now we've got the um, announcement of the government saying they want to stop the, the the dialogue on the association agreement altogether. Is that, in your parts, uh, in your opinion, still part of a gamble? Or are we or are we really talking about this is nearly over? Thank you. Behind. Yes, Stefanie Zwerg, I can say, a sort of a follow-up, do you have a plan B, uh, what you could do at the, at the summit in Vilnius uh, in case this uh, goes the way that my colleague uh, described it, uh, that you could sign something differently, maybe less, uh, less uh, enhancing than the, the association agreement or another other agreement to open up for, for other talks. Thank you. And the lady at the back on the left. Thank you for Minister Linkevich, I just want to ask you this recent news about the Ukrainian government's uh, decision to stop negotiations, uh, what does he think is it the end of the story? Mm -hmm. Sumi, another question. Uh, well, uh, as, as I said, given the experience so far and given the mixed uh, messages we were receiving for a long time, uh, so let's be careful and not jump, let's not jump to these final conclusions. Uh, so I would take some time for reflection and to clarifying what that means uh, to receive information from all corners. Uh, because as I said already, I, I know that it's uh, quite hard work in, in the work in the Rada and the Parliament, and they are keen to finalize these agreements and laws. So my question is why, what for, if, if the decision to stop it, as I said. So let, let's clarify. Should be maybe some statement by the president. I expect also should be more more information. But uh, when the information will come, then we will reflect. We will discuss among the colleagues in Foreign Affairs Council. And it's premature now to, to make any any so to say description of possibility of this Plan B, as you said. Uh, we'll find some solutions, I believe, if it's if it's necessary. But let me not not uh, speculate on this uh, at this point. We'll see. No more. Oh, uh, sorry, sorry, gentlemen. Yeah. Uh, uh, Andrew Higgins from New York Times. <coughs> the famous benchmarks of last December make no mention of Yulia Tymoshenko, as far as I recall. Does that mean that if she isn't released, a deal would still be possible? Yeah. I know this question is repeatedly asked, uh, and, but let me stop here as well to consider all picture and everything. By the way, you mentioned Yulia Tymoshenko. We also believe I, I had some, some prim again, information which is not final official that she also is going to make some kind of statements. We'll see. So everything, all in all, uh, then we will judge about whole, whole, 
whole story holistically speaking how it looks like and then we will be able to say where we are but benchmarks as i said those benchmarks 11 of them or whatever which were defined in the december uh, in the almost in the full capacity they were, were fulfilled by the way yeah it was never set in the documents. It was stated by some capitals, by some politicians. So what I'm saying, not let's not jump to the conclusion. We'll see where we will be in the situation. It, it, it's, 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 it was not set in any document, by the way. But I'm not, I'm not, I'm not so to say, neglecting this. I'm not, not so to say, undermining, not underestimating this. But, but, uh, just saying how it looks like. I sorry, but I will not repeat. <laughs> it's too boring to say the same. Sorry. So the answer is that let's uh, approach the, all this process comprehensively and then we'll take decisions about everything, not, uh, not talking about details or, or shortcomings uh, which are fragmented, but just to take all this picture and then we'll be able to, to judge and we will come up with the, our opinion in due time, due course. And again, not, let's not rush. It's very careful responsible not to make any any judgments beforehand before we'll clarify the story uh, because we, we see we, we have some lessons learned before let's not 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 rush too much minister you told me that you had just two minutes so uh, yes I, I would use the last two minutes to put another question just to you or while well, the other panel members of course are welcome as well that uh, if there is no signature in Vilnius and if uh, the Ukraine way is getting weaker uh, in the partnership uh, procedure altogether. Uh, what will be the next in your eyes for the Eastern Partnership Program altogether? Lithuania was one of the, 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 the most uh, energetic uh, supporter for the Eastern Partnership. Uh, where do you see then uh, the next uh, step to, for the future? It's related to previous questions. I will be the last to say that it's over, you know, it's uh, dead. I will be the last who will say that because I believe it's, it's perspective. It's, I'm just said what I think. It will be more difficult, less impressive, less much motivations, uh, a lot of obstacles. And uh, again, I didn't say that it's not possible in the future. I just said what I think. It will be less, less probable. And there are a lot of reasons for that, political reasons, uh, also political season in European Union, uh, upcoming elections, change of the core end of uh, term of commission, m many, many others. And, you know, that that's explains the story. So I think time is not on our side. So why we were so, uh, not just because for fun, but we are saying that time is important. So we have to do that now. By the way, the reason was that we are ready to do that. I'm convinced. We still, still were ready this morning. Uh, maybe we are still ready today. I don't know. Let's clarify, clarify the story, how it looks like. But the situation uh, with regard to the Eastern Partnership, well, it is as it is. We'll try to do the best any way to keep moving ahead and to continue talking with our friends who also have their own national agenda, which is part of their strategy. And let's respect also their uh, investments and time what they sacrificed, not sacrificed, used, because it was just uh, for, for the purpose. And this is also part of the story, with all respect of the country, which is really big and decisive, but not the only one. So uh, not very optimistic, I, I will not deny <laughs> this is true but not the end of the game anyway. Optimism is uh, my main shortcoming, and not the only one. Uh, one final question. Do you, do you envision an, an extraordinary foreign affairs council in the run up to them? Yeah, it's, it's not excluded, but it's up to high representative to decide. Uh, she, she is in charge of all this uh, choreography, how to organize. Of course it's not excluded, because in the last foreign affairs council there were no decisions, so it should be some decision at any point uh, when and how, we will see. Oh, let's let's <laughs> let's be not be in the details because it will not be productive. But I, I believe me for words that its majority was fulfilled. Thank you for now. Yes, I can. 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 I can.